COVID-19 vaccine, are you obliged to take it? Or would it be better for society to give up your slot for now to someone determined to be more in dire need? With America desperate to get back to normalcy and President Biden promising 100 million shots in the first 100 days, you'd think it a no-brainer to grab one if you can. But due to the bumpy distribution so far and inequitable access in various parts of the country, deciding to get inoculated is presenting many Americans with a moral quandary. Nobody better to discuss this with than Art Kaplan, the founding director of the Division of Medical Ethics at New York University's Grossman School of Medicine. What do you say, Dr. Kaplan, if offered, should you take it? Well, Michael, it's noble to say, I don't want to take it. It's admirable to try and get it to somebody else, but I think you have to take it. And the reason is we're not set up to redeploy vaccine that somebody turns down. It's hard to find someone who's uh, in need more than you, uh, very difficult to move the vaccine, it's hard to ship it and uh, transfer it. I think you're stuck. You can take it with some, you know, uh, regret, but I think you have to take it. So let's distinguish your advice to take it if it's offered from gaming the system. Yeah, so there's a difference between saying I showed up uh, because they called me in and uh, said uh, there's a vaccine for you and you look around and you think hey uh, what am i doing here i'm not uh, old and i'm not at risk uh, i think you have to take what you can get versus i'm going to bribe somebody by giving a big donation to uh, say a school or a university which i've heard about to get in uh, in front of the line i'm going to fly to florida or nevada where they seem to be chaotic and just stand there even though i'm not at risk or I'm going to pay a lot of money to uh, private practice doctors who somehow get a hold. That's cutting in line. That's unethical. I'm hearing anecdotally through my, my radio work from people who, and I guess it was inevitable, that we would get to a stage where people are starting now to hear stories about neighbors, their social circle, their friends and family. You know, why did he get it? And why have I still not gotten it? Or why hasn't my grandmother gotten it? Because the guy that I work with has got it. Well, the rollout has been, you said, Rocky, I'm going to say total mess, uh, unbelievably bad. The Trump administration had promised, you remember, Michael, a surplus of vaccine. There wasn't any. States began to plan to get that. Expanded the eligibility criteria when there's no vaccine in a lot of these states. In New York, for example, they're out today. Why would you say more people can come in if you don't have any vaccine? And then vaccine was distributed, if you will, to places where there weren't people uh, that could take the vaccine. Plus, we had another problem, Michael. Refusal rates are high. In some places, 30 40%. We do have to pay attention to that. I would not refuse the vaccine if offered. It's safe. It's effective. Much better than getting COVID. But you have those high refusal rates. you got to redeploy the supply right away. The stuff's in the fridge. It's opened up. It's ready to go. You have to keep going down your list. So... We didn't plan properly, we didn't get the vaccine out there, and then we didn't figure out what to do uh, to redeploy it if somebody refused it, or if a refrigerator yeah. broke, or you opened up a package of 500 and people missed their appointments. Quick final question, how far away are we from employers mandating that employees be vaccinated, that venues say admission only for people who've had it, airlines saying you want to fly with us, we're going to need proof? You know, we're not far, Michael. It's, it's uh, really contingent on supply. People keep saying to me, well, I'm not going to let the government mandate a vaccine. Maybe we didn't even want to wear a mask, but that's not how it's going to work. Airlines, cruise ships, hotels overseas, uh, trains, they're going to say, you're not getting in here without a vaccine. We're going to see efforts made, I think, to vaccinate athletes so they can keep playing. Maybe even at the Olympics, mandatory, can't uh, come into sure. the stadium without a vaccine. We're going to see mandates coming, but they're going to come out of the private sector, I think, first, and then expand. But yeah, as soon as we have enough vaccine, I think many businesses are going to say, you want to come to work? you got to show uh, proof of vaccination. We'll see those vaccines. Dr. Vaccines. Kaplan, thank you as always. We appreciate your expertise. Hey, Michael, thanks for having me. Checking in again.